the earliest. Ruth Goodman tells the tale of the Wigan Wonder who swapped the grimy streets for the silver screen. In this house on Atherton Road, Wigan, lived a Lancashire lad loved for his goofy grin and cheeky songs. He nicked the nation's affection from bigger stars. He nicked his dad's stage act. And it all turned out nice again for George Formby. She shouted with laughter, and oh, what you're after, it's Auntie Maggie's remedy. Turned out nice again, hasn't it? And life was surprisingly nice when George Formby was just George Hoy Booth. The family had known poverty and hardship in the old Wigan back-to-backs, but his namesake dad was the first George Formby to make a name for himself on stage. It was Formby Senior's money that had taken the family out to Hindley House here on the outskirts of town. But George took a step further than his music hall dad. He took his northernness and sold it to southerners. And by 1939, he was the biggest radio and film star of his generation. He was a bright light in a town made infamously dark by coal. It's said that there were even coal mines in the back gardens of Wigan. Another George, George Orwell, described it in his Road to Wigan Pier as a lunar landscape of slag heaps, a world from which vegetation had been banished, when nothing existed except smoke, shale, ice, mud, ashes and foul water. But the people who'd made those slag heaps made the best company for George Formby Jr., in the pubs where the pit men drank, he felt he was one of them, not a lad from along the canal in Leafy Hindley. Hello. Hello, Edwin. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. My goodness, this is some house, isn't it? It is. So what was it like here when the Formbys were here? Well, so far as we can see from the photographs, this was their main dining room. And it was full of paintings. It's a grand house. He had his Rolls Royce outside. I had a Rolls Royce outside yes. as well. Wow. He certainly lived very well. Jerry Maudsley is the president of the George Formby Society. George Formby Senior, his mum was a bit of a drunkard, so he'd sing for pennies. And he was quite a good singer. Uh, so much so, uh, he became a music hall star and ended up on two Royal Command performances. <laughs> That's a real rag to riches story. Absolutely. Isn't it? What yeah. an amazing thing. But George Formicini said, There's no way you're following me. He said, One fool in the family is enough. Really? And young George was going to become a jockey. In fact, this, <laughs> this house is where young George learned to ride. So the world very nearly didn't see the many faces of George Formby. His father forbade him from even attending any of his performances. But performing was in the young George's blood. When his father died, coached by his mother, he began a tribute act, singing his father's songs and cracking his father's jokes. Still in his teens, George had made it in the music halls. He was getting top billing at places like this. The Tainside Hippodrome, now sadly closed. Music Hall was the television of its day, and it was a kind of never a dull moment, and <laughs> the enthusiasm was both on the stage and in the audience, and I think it was a kind of an electricity between the two. But it wasn't until he took up the weird-looking banjolele, a cross between the banjo and the ukulele, that George Jr. moved out of the shadow of his father and made it in his own right. He really enjoyed making pictures and it made him far more famous than he was before. In his 30s heyday, George Formby was Britain's biggest star. His movie contracts were worth millions in today's money. But unlike many stars who couldn't wait to escape their roots, Formby made a fortune remembering his. His trick was to make the rest of us join in. Even when he was singing about something as parochial as his granddad's flannelette shirt, it had the nation rocking with laughter. <laughs> Wigan's favourite son paved the way for other northern lights to shine nationally. The Beatles were big fans. The young John Lennon loved seeing him. George Harrison and Paul McCartney took up the ukulele because of him. And it's hard to imagine when I'm 64 without him. When I'm 64. 50 years after his death, there are George Formby Appreciation Societies up and down the land, revelling in his ringing Wigan tones. Turned out nice again, hasn't it? <laughs> um, like him, you...